concerning work, he treated me when he had come Go strong again, God oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Praise God. I honor the God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, that another day the Lord has made for us to meet once again. For us to be alive today is not by our power or might, but by His grace. So I welcome you, my fathers, my mothers, my brothers and sisters, my children in the Lord. I pray, Almighty Father, that you've tuned in to me today, will not disappoint you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the hour of hope, which is brought to you by Christ Hope Ministries. Every Monday at 9 p.m. London time, we shall be on here by the special grace of God. God on our side while we're still alive, we shall be with you in the name of Jesus. Please, I always ask you, pray for me. I need your prayer every day, every time. Anytime you remember this ministration, please remember to pray for us. Before we start, let us go into a very short prayer. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Holy Michael. Father, Lord God, I thank you that you have made another day possible for all of us to be alive. Last week, we called upon you. You answered us and you blessed us. You uphold us. You protected and guided us. I thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity you have given to us to speak your word and for your children to listen and hear to your words. O oh Lord, I pray that we shall continue to remain in you in the name of Jesus. I pray, Almighty Father, that this word which shall be spoken and heard by your children shall come from you, O Lord God, and will be directed by you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You tune in once again to Hour of Hope. Today's ministration, as you have seen, is rewards for a man of God or a woman of God. 
So when I use man, please, I also include woman. So what I'm trying to ask or say or let us know is whether a man of God should be rewarded or a man of God should get reward or ask for reward for the service, the spiritual services he or she provides for you. Should you reward them? Should they ask you to give them? This is what I want to base my ministration of today upon. What do I mean by reward? A reward is something that someone receives or an, which another person gives in return for a service, in return for something that someone has done or so what someone has given. So if I do something for you as a man of God, should I ask for that reward or should you give me a reward? Is it imperative or is it compulsory for you I have given service to to reward me? Or is it me as a man of God who should make the demand from you? This is what I'm trying to so if you say teaching, uh, if you say preaching about, so this is what I'm making my ministration, basing my ministration of today. Rewards for a man of God, for the services he or he provides for you. Should you give a man of God reward? Should a man of God ask for a reward from you? This are the main things I want to talk about today. And of course, we have to base everything on what the Bible says. First and foremost, I know you have, a, you have within yourself that yes, a man of God can demand for hate. A man of God can, can be, can be uh, rewarded for what he or she have done. I'm not disputing whatever Whatever you have, whatever, and you, some people may even say, why should they be rewarded? Ah, huh? they should not be rewarded. After today, you will make your conclusion whether they need reward or not. I'm not speaking as a person like me, oh, all about that, but I am included. So I have to be honest with you whether a man of God should be rewarded or not or whether the man of god should make demand from you like they will say if the uh, muhammad will not go to the mountain the mountain will come to muhammad or if uh, the mountain will not go to muhammad muhammad will go to the mountain so it is that is exactly what today's ministration is all about of course we know that the Bible says, and I will start from the book of Matthew chapter, chapter 10. What does the Bible say about reward? I will start from what Jesus said and I will go from there. Even during the time of Jesus Christ, what really happened? We know. And it's not that even Jesus Christ, during his own time, was he rewarded? Was he asking people to give him money? Was he charging people? I, I will explain. And everything within the word of God. I always say, and I continue to say in different moments, at this present moment, I ask God to decrease me completely all my knowledge, all my understanding, all my know-how, all my everything I know should decrease, go completely. Why my Lord Jesus Christ should take absolute control of everything I'm going to say today. I welcome you all. And I know all of you. God knows more than me. I know you people from America, from United Kingdom, from Italy, from Nigeria. Uh, yes, from France. So God bless you. So as you tune in, 
God will continue to be with you. I cannot be mentioning names. Jesus Christ recognizes you. Jesus Christ recognizes you. So, should a man of God get reward? Should he not get reward? And I have been linked by someone from the United States of America. He is in person of Reverend Martin Ware. So, he may have something to say in our administration of today. He is also a broadcaster, a man of God. So, as I speak, he will have one or two things to say as well. So, today will be a sort of interaction and he will contribute as well. So, I welcome you, my Father and the Lord, from America. As America, God bless you. Now, I'm discussing about reward for a man of God. Should a man of God be rewarded or should he or she demand for reward? And that is today's ministration. Now, like I said, I'm going to start from the book of Matthew, chapter 10. Matthew, chapter 10. Commencing, I will only read verses 7 and 8. That, that Lord said, and as you go, that is when Jesus Christ sent the twelve on the missionary. He said, as ye go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devil. Freely, freely, you have received. Freely, give. Hmm. Freely, you have received. Freely, give. That is the crunch of it. What does that mean? God, our Lord Jesus Christ, was telling his disciples, as you are going, of course, he's telling them, don't charge anybody for what he, you are going to do. On the journey you are going, don't demand for anything from anybody. Don't take, in fact, he will ask them, where you are going, take nothing with you, because God will provide for them. Of course, they were not going to ask, but when the people saw the, the men of God, how they were speaking the word of God, they were easily convinced. And these people, in fact, mostly women, that is what women were doing those days, taking care of the disciples. Anywhere they go, they will take good care of them. That is where I'm going. But the disciples were not to charge for what they were doing. They were not to demand from anybody what they were doing. But as they go, the love of providence will provide. Look at, although it's nothing to do with reward, look at Abraham. When he was about to, uh, he was taking his, his, uh, his son, Isaac, to be offered, Isaac asked him, Father, this is the wood, this is this, uh, the, the, the altar, this is uh, the cutlass. Where is the offering? The man, the man of God, Abraham said, the Lord will provide. And at the end, the Lord provided. So it's the same thing for men of God. When Christ sent them on that errand, on the mission, they should not take anything with them. And they are not going to fast. When they get there, the Lord of Providence will provide, will bring people from near and far to do what? To provide for them. So it's not, the honor is not on them to ask them. So that is where I'm going. Now, many ways God is using you. Even the, the, there's nothing you are doing that God does not use it. Look, even, are you a musician? God has given you the talent to sing in his house. But nowadays, what are we seeing? They are now demanding that before I play my drum, before I play my, uh, my, uh, my guitar, before I sing, 
you have to pay me. Is that what God wants? You see, if you do well, I'm sure your church, community one way or the other, they will have a way of rewarding you. Are you a man of God? A prophet? You are, you are a good prophet? You pray for someone? And before you pray for them, you do what? You ask for money. If you don't pay me, I'm not going to do that for you. That is not. Pardon, sir. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. See, God has called all of us for one thing or the other. And it's a free gift that the Lord has given all of us. And like Matthew 10, from 8 and 9, says, Freely you are giving, you must give it free. I'm not saying as a man of God, you they should not take good care of you. Far from it. They must a, a man of God deserve something. Well, I'm still I'm coming, I'm coming to that as well. So you people will listening, you will see and you will hear that when God calls you, He has offered you something. He will do what? We provide for you. Yeah? He will pro There's a way of God providing. He will not leave you comfortless. You know, when he was going, he was not even talking about Holy Spirit alone. He said, I am going. I will send a help to you. I, I will not leave you comfortless. He's not talking at it about Holy Spirit alone. I know the crunch of it was Holy Spirit. But when you are in God, because if you are not in God, if you are not in, you do not accept Christ, the Holy Spirit will not come upon you at all. So whatever you need, let us put everything before God. He is the giver of all good things. God started for, I mean, showed us the example. The first example I would use was his only begotten son, as we always say in the book of John chapter 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the world that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Because of you, because of, he did not ask you for anything. All he says is you must believe him because if you don't believe him, then you have problems. So God is saying to you, freely you are giving, freely you must give. Like I also said, it does not mean you should not be appreciated. I'm coming to that. So please, I want you to sit down so that you don't just hear the beginning and not hear the end. Because I have to balance it and I have to be honest and say the truth 
what the Bible says. It's not because it affects me or, or not. No. If come with me and even let's see how God even did it for himself that even because of you, because of me, he did not spare his son. Come with me to Romans chapter 12. His own son, because of, and it's because of you, because of me. He did not. He, he now said, what he wants you, he said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, only acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable service. Which is your reasonable service? That is as a man of God, as a woman of God, you need to present yourself as a living sacrifice, acceptable only unto God. That is the reasonable service. Is asking you nothing else, nothing more. The E will provide. That is that is what you must understand. He will provide for you when you ask him. And if you come, uh, let's come to Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, come, uh -huh, verse 32. He did not spare his... He said, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give all us all things? So if he's able to give Christ himself to us, is it what you are going to eat that that same God will not give you? That is what this passage is telling us. Whatever you need from God he is the provider. He will provide for you. That is very, very sure. You need to understand it very well. That he will provide also for you. He has shown the, the example to us. Shown it to us. For us to understand that he will continue to provide for all our needs. He has given us his son. He delivered him because of you, because of me. And also, he has given us the spirit freely. The spirit you they rely on, that you are charging people for, they do buy it, they do pay for it, they do buy it, they do pay for it. Did, did anybody give you money or accept? You go, to soothsayers, you go to the abbalists, you go to the alcohols, you go to people of the, the principalities. If you have your power from those people, maybe you pay them. But I believe a, ma a true man of God can pray for someone and God hear that prayer. You don't have to seek for assistance from any other source. Even you go out, away from Christ, you go to Abalis, how much did they charge you? Like my father and the Lord just said, you ask for hundred dollars, you ask for hundred pounds, you ask for uh, 20,000 naira, you ask for hundred euro. Is that, is, what would that do in your life? I know, a little drop makes like ocean. But that is not what God has called you for. Your reward is not here. Even David said in Psalm 54, 6, that I will offer sacrifice freely to you. Let me go there. Uh, Psalm 60, um, Psalm 54, I think verse 6. Yes, he said, I will freely Sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. I will freely sacrifice unto thee. See what David himself do. 
you have not got power like David. No. Psalm 54. Psalm 54, verse 6. I will freely sacrifice with, with praises unto him. So you yourself, anything you do, in fact, when you pray and God answers your prayer, you pray for your members, let's say, and God answers your prayer, what you should do is ask people to, to come and rejoice with you, to praise God that I pray and God has answered my prayer. I pray for someone, God answered that prayer. Give testimony. If you go to Psalm 32, say, in, in your, in your, in, among the congregation, I will praise your name. That is what you need. That is your reward. Your reward is still coming. I know you need to sustain yourself. You need to uh, live comfortably without any, without you begging for food. But if your way, the Bible says, if your way is true with him, it will make your enemies to be at peace with you. So if your way is true to God, he has a way of providing, of bringing people to come and give you. Look, as I, like I said, I'm not saying you are not entitled to some. Let me just go to a man of God. Uh, in the book of 2 Kings, I want to use that. 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4 is about Elijah, El sorry, Elisha and the Shunammite woman. You know, Elisha was just doing his work, which God has called him. But this woman was a rich woman, a affluent woman, very popular in the community. Elijah did not ask for accommodation. When that man traveled, Elijah has provided a place. I mean, the woman, the Shunammite woman has provided a place for Elijah anytime he comes to, to lodge. Now, this, this woman, Elijah did not ask for her to take care of him. But out of a generosity the woman the woman did he, she was very very respected she was a respectable woman a very wealthy woman very kind woman eh? the shinaman woman he was kind to nothing and he was kind to a man of God the prophet Elijah Elisha and because of that because the woman saw the spirit of the Lord in Elisha. And sorry, in Eli Elisha. Took, a, in, took in him and made provision for him. That means, and does not say that Elijah demanded for money. Let me just read. He said, And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shinon, where was a great woman. And she constrained him to eat bread, and so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned him thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is a holy man of God. Look at it. He saw that Elijah, you by your fruit we shall know you. By your fruit we shall know you. Elisha. The man saw the woman saw Elisha to be a woman, a man of God, a great man, and he told his, he, she appealed to husband, let us bring this man in and make provision for him in our home. And that woman, that time, had no child. That woman had no child. I'm bringing two things out of this. That woman had no child. Make provision for a man of God. And if because of time, I will call my father as well, my father and the Lord to uh, give a, a little bit contribution. The man, a, the man, the husband, the woman and the, his husband, they took Elijah in. And one day, 
El, sorry, Elisha. One day, Elisha asked Naaman, Gears, sorry, Gears, what can we do for this woman? Look at it. Elisha did not ask her to accommodate him. Elijah, what did he do? Elijah just, Elisha went in. Then, because he saw the kindness of that woman. He said, what can we do for this man? And for this woman. And Gaius told the man of God, Ah, uh, the woman hasn't got a child. Ah, is that the case? What did Elisha, Elisha did do? Elisha started to pray, pray for the woman. He said, by this time next year, you will have a baby. Look at that. A man of God was rewarded. He did not ask for reward. But if you are a man of God, if you pray for someone and God answers your prayer and they could see the glory of God in you, you don't ask to have to ask for money. You don't ask for ask for anything. Look, Elisha, the woman out of her generosity gave to the man of God. And in reciprocation, the man of God prayed. Said this time next year. And of course, by the grace of God, if you read 2 King chapter 4, start from verse 8, downward, you will see the woman had a child. As he has said, as the man of God has said, he had, she had a, a, a son. And again, if you go to chapter 8 of 2 King chapter 8, the same woman was sent out of his city. After seven years, she came back and she went to the king. By the time she got to the king, Gaius was in with the king and was talking about the same woman, what Elisha did for the same woman when the woman came in. You can see. And through that, by the grace of God, through Elisha as well, the things that have been taken away from that woman when she left the city for seven years was restored back to him. So you, as a person, as a member of a church, when you see a man or woman of God, appreciate them. Appreciate your pastor. Appreciate your shepherd. Appreciate your prophet and prophetesses who do not demand for money. If they demand, they are working for devil. They are not of God. If I say before I come to you to come and pray for you, you must give me something or you must do this. And you don't see me as not a man of God. I must come to you pray for you i must not ask you must not it must not be done under a condition what i mean by that condition let me say i must be honest if say oh you want me to come to your place to come and pray for you for example and you want to provide pro, uh, transport for me to get there all well and good but it's not for me do not say before you you you, you i come to your place you must give me 500 pounds. You must give me 800 dollars. You must give me 200,000 naira. You must give me 450 euro. No. A man of God is not to demand. If a man of God demands from you that you should give him or her money before he prays for you or because he has prayed for you, is not a man of God. I'm not being judgmental. I'm not. Uh, I'm not condemning that person. I'm only condemning the spirit in that person to demand for that money from you. And can I also, please? I don't want to be a chauvinist, but from my experience, it is our women that are prone to this tactics, strategy of prophet, man, men and women of God, that they, they sugarcoated you, they speak to you, and you just go out of your way to go and, but if someone said, oh, go and sell your property, bring your money, 
you are deceiving yourself. No, it's not God. It's not God. Don't listen to people who are asking you to give them money before they pray for you. They want, they want, they want to charge you. Leave them. They are not men and women of God. However, if they pray for you, God answers your prayer. You want to appreciate them. You want to show your appreciation to them as look, before you show appreciation to them, show it to God first. They do remember to thank God before you even thank that man because God has done it through that man. So, I'm not saying you don't appreciate your pastor. I'm not saying you should not appreciate your shepherd. You must appreciate them. They are human beings like you. They want to live conveniently as well. They are running up and down for you. But it's not for them to demand from you. Do not fall into that tactics which most of them is using. You men and women of God. This man, Elisha, they saw the glory of God in him that he did not ask for money from that woman. He did not ask for a company. It is from the woman who has seen him in, coming to that city all the time. They say, ah, let us make provision for him. And the man of God did not say, no, don't give it to me. Because he needed it. He did not demand it. So you, there's nothing bad in you accepting a reward given to you, not what you demand. That is the difference. You don't demand. You can get if they give it to you. There's, I don't say anything about that. Because men and women of God, they do, I will still give you Bible passages. But I don't have any passage where it says that you can ask for money. Or that they can ask money from you before they pray for you. If anybody asks for money from you before they pray for you, they are devilish. You women, when you see a prophet, oh, like people living in, let's say people living in United Kingdom, oh, they hear that a prophet is coming from Nigeria. Out of that, they went there because of their problem and they kill. It's not God. That is Satan you have gone to. If you don't know. If you are going to them, that is Satan. You are going to. What your there's a, there are prophets and prophetesses in your church. In other places. You can go to, you don't have to say, oh, hey, that holy is a, is a, is a sinner holy. Who says that? Who said that? It's full of evil. They will demand for money. They are they are sugarcoating you. Eh? There is is a way of duping you. Don't fall into satanic tactic. That is satanic. I, I love those people, but I hate what they do. I love all of them, like God says we should love everybody, but I hate that spirit in them which, which makes them to demand money from you. Most of all, please, women, let us run from these false prophets. They have nothing to offer you. If they have something to offer you, they will not demand money because God is the provider, the provider, provider of all good things. And that is if you come to me, with me, to look, uh, Philippians chapter 4, we always read it and we always quote that, that passage, but we don't know what led to that passage all the time. That we we just quote that passage. Oh, we we quote uh, that passage all the time. But what led to it? So we can we can appreciate a man of God. When you appreciate them, they still pray for you, and God will answer your prayer. Let me start. Uh, the book of Philippians four. Yes, for from verse from verse 10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me have flourished again, wherein you are also careful, but 
you lack opportunity. He was talking to the Philippians. Now, not listen, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, there to be content. So, as a prophet of God, as a man of God, as a shepherd of God, as a pastor, as a apostle, as a reverend, learn how to be content with what you have. I know both how to abase and I know how to abandon everywhere. And in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abandon and to suffer need. I, I can do all things to Christ who strengthened me. And he went uh, to verse 15. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto me, unto, unto my necessity. Not because I desire, I desire a gift, but I desire a fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full having received of Aphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. Now, the, 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 the passage we always quote, 419, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So, they, you see the prayer he made there, because they have already appreciated it, and he's appreciating them as well, and he is praying for them. So, a man of God must be, can be rewarded. A man of God must have to cater for, for, for himself, for, I mean, have to look after himself as well. But if he's a man of God, like let's say a church, a church must be responsible to cater for their man of God. Not the man of God. But if, if the church does not cater for them, that's why you see that most of them, because of their greediness, they will be charging people to pray for them. They will say they have special prayer they will make, do for you. What special prayer? What special prayer? When God says, ask, Come when Jesus Christ was nailed on the cross and he said it is finished. The, 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 the Bible makes us to understand that that cloth, the cutting in the temple, tore into two. So you can go directly to Christ yourself. You don't have, excuse me, to go through any intermediary. No. Look at a Peter. He was offered money. Let's go to Act uh, chapter 8. When, when he was praying and he, lays his, he laid his hand on people and the Holy Spirit was upon them. Then, let's see. And I, I read Act of Apostle chapter 8. I start from verse 18. Act of Apostle 8, verse 18. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostle hands, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money, <laughs> uh, saying, Give me also this power that I, on whomever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. They offered it to him, he rejected it. It is the reason is because the reason why he has been he, he rejected it was the purpose for what asking for that uh, giving that money was not in line with God. But you yourself, my brothers and my sisters, you will say, Yes, the money, I get it. Just get it. And just dupe that person. Why do you have to dupe them when God has given it to you freely? Why do you have to sell? Some people, they give prophecy. Sorry, I'm talking about my even personal, my church. In my church, not my parish, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about my church worldwide. They pray for you. 
they give prophecy to you. They write it down. You cannot go anywhere to go and do the prayer. You have to do that prayer through them. They have to do it for you. That person that does that for you is not of God. It's not a man of God. He's, he's being possessed by evil spirit. He's being possessed by devil. If a prophet should say, the message I give, I'm giving to you, the, my prophecy, and to do the prayer, I must do the prayer for you here. You can't go everything you want to buy to do the prayer. You have to do it here. Is a false prophecy. How do you know a, man, a, a good, true prophecy? A one who says and it comes to pass. They will have good character, integrity, we stand. But if someone's character is in doubt, forget that person. I'm not saying God cannot change anybody. God can change anybody. There's no one he cannot change. He, there's no one he cannot change. So this is time for us to think deeply and let us consider heaven rather than this world. Your reward, yes, is in heaven. But you need to maintain yourself alive here in the world here, yes. Why you are still in the world? Yes. I do not dispute that. But don't charge people. Come with me uh, to the book of Luke chapter 2 chapter 12 Luke chapter 12 He was talking about uh, unfaithful servants. I will, I will start from uh, let me start from verse 44. Oh, 40, let me start from 42. Said, Who then is that faithful wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find doing so. You ask yourself, man of God, when Christ comes, is he going to find you? In the right way, you are duping people. It's for you to change. God can make good use of you if you don't understand. God can make good use of you. Of truth, I say unto them that He will make Him ruler over all things. But and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth is coming and shall begin to beat the man servant and maidens and to eat and drink, and to be drunken. The Lord of the servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at that hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in, a son, in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Listen. And that servant, which knew his lost will, his lost will, and prepare not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes, for unto whom, this is where I'm going, for unto whom much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. So if you are put in a vantage position, you have big responsibility. There are things that, look, if you are a prophet, it's not for you to charge. It's, it's a responsibility. God has given you. And you must discharge the duty of a prophet. The duty of a shepherd, the duty of a pastor, the duty of a teacher, the duty of a, a prophet, of a preacher, the duty of an apostle. You must discharge them thoroughly in the way of God, not in your own way. Look, don't ask for them. Do what you can do and pray yourself. God has a way of bringing people 
There are times you just see, you just see visitors coming to your church and you pray and they give you something. I'm not saying don't ask, I don't, don't take it from them, but don't ask them to give you. Don't charge them. Don't say when they come to you, you pray for them. Any, you, uh, you have to buy certain things and when you want to, someone who has come to you is unemployed and you want to pray for him and say, oh, when I total everything we are going to buy for, your, for us to do the prayer you require, you will have to pay 100, 100 pounds, 100 dollars, 100 euro, uh, uh, 20,000 naira. Someone who said employed, how do you expect him or her to get that money? Whereas that person could have used 100, 100, one, one, one percent of that to do the prayer and God will answer him or her. You are in a, to whom much is given, much is, respect, is expected. If you are talented, do not use it to make profit. When you are trusted with something, you must be faithful. You must faithfully manage it to those, for those people. Manage it wisely. That is what the book of Luke chapter 12 has just read for you. So you, you need to understand that. You do what? Need to understand what I am telling you. Do not, under any circumstance, charge people when you pray for them or before you pray for them. Let it come from their heart. Look, the book of 2 Thessalonians is the book of Paul. It supports you as a man or woman of God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10 verse 10 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10 says For even when we were with you this was commended for you that if any man will not walk neither should he eat. So as a man of God once you walk thoroughly your church, your environment, the community you are working for, they are supposed to reward you. But if you don't work, how will they do it for you? How will they? Let's go again to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. He said, Let him that steal, steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Look at it. Don't charge, don't dupe people. Don't misrepresent God. Don't misrepresent Christ to people. God has a way of rewarding you. Come again to Proverbs 20. Proverbs 20, 13. Proverbs 20, 13. Proverbs 20, 13. It said, Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thy eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. So, don't just see that. When you walk, you will eat. God has a way of providing for you. And the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, for those who walk in the temple, eh? what does he say before I end? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I will read 13 and 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I read verses 13 and 14. It said, 
do you not know that they which minister about only things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with all the with the altars? Even so, have the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live on the gospel. So a man of God needs to be rewarded. A man of God needs to be rewarded. There is no doubt. Please, every man of God, you are entitled to be rewarded, to be rewarded, not to ask for reward. That's the difference. A man of God should be rewarded. They have to live. In fact, when you don't ask, there are people where God can bring people to you to assist you in your living, you and your family, that you will be in want of nothing, that you will lack nothing. Because you are working in the altar, you are bound to eat in the uh, things of the altar. So don't let anybody say, oh no, uh, you should be as poor as the rat of uh, the rat in the church. In fact, in my church, the rat in my church, they are very, when you see them in uh, first day, second day, they are, they are big. Because there are a lot of things for them to eat there. So you are supposed to be rewarded. But you are not supposed to impose on them how much they should give you. How much you will charge them. I'm not this time, please. I'm not talking about salary. You negotiate about salary that bought extra money from somewhere. People you have prayed for. In fact, you pray for them. Before that, you are already doing that. I remember when I went to my country, Nigeria, we had some people to come and do the cooking, do the serving for us. And uh, later, one of the boys serving came to me. He said, Ah, excuse me, aren't you going to give us something? Ah, I'm not used to it. Give you something. You are employed. To come and serve, you will be paid. You are not doing anything extra for me. But forget whether I give it to him. But what I'm just bringing out is I was surprised. Well, he needed, I gave it to him. But he is not a man of God. He is not a man of God. So, what I'm saying is, a man of God must be rewarded. But a man of God must not, must not demand for those he is praying for, for anything. When you do it, when Elisha, which I use as a case study here, when Elisha pray for the woman every year, in fact, he, he, the woman got reward than what he, she was expecting. Because she has forgotten, she did not know she was going to have any, any child again. But she had a child. You men and women, listen to me. If you are not a man of God, you are a man of God. What I mean is that being you are not a, a shepherd, you are not a prophet, you are not an evangelist, you are not a pastor in the church, you are just a member of the church. You need to appreciate your shepherd, you need to appreciate. Your, go, your prophets who are working in the vineyard. I mean those who are working in the vineyard of God. You know to be workers. Appreciate them. Give them something. Forget what they get from the church. The, when you give, see this woman, this is my woman. When she gave to Elisha, God multiplied them. See uh, what the, um, Paul said in the book of Philippians chapter 4 when he was commending the Thessalonians, the people, the Philippians, when they were giving him reward, he prayed for them, my Lord will provide for all your needs. He is the provider. You, you need to appreciate men and women of God. Give them if you have. But you men and women of God, do not demand. Do not charge them. If you charge them, 
is not the good spirit that is in you. It's evil devilish, the evil spirit that is in you. I want you to have the spirit of God in you. Because when you ask, he said, how much more will he not give you that Holy Spirit when you ask for it? And when he has given it to you freely, don't charge for it. Use it, use it wisely for the kingdom. Because you are winning soul for the kingdom. I pray, Almighty Father, we change all of us. We change us from what we are doing that is not expected of you of me all our evil ways i pray almighty father to change us so that men of god will be seen and be respected our let us have that that status let us maintain our integrity our status without blemish we must be without blemish at all the time let us appreciate god when you appreciate men and women of god God will appreciate you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will keep you. Please, give and you shall be given. It is good to give than to receive. And I can tell you when you give, like uh, the book of uh, Proverbs 11, 24 says, the, the people who, who are open minded, uh, who have open hand, that are not stingy, you see, what God does. Try Him. God will bless you. You are one of those people who will, who will is a partaker in that bad things. Because you offer them money. You say because they told you or they tell you you must pay. Therefore, you have to pay them. No! You are not supposed to pay anybody. But you can appreciate afterwards. And you see what they have done. Not say, oh, before I pray for you, you must pay me 10000 Because I do this, I do that. No. But when they pray for you, appreciate them. God will appreciate you. Thank you very much. God bless you. God uphold you. May God honor you all the time. And the glory of God will continue to show your life. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, this is uh, the Hour of Hope. We always start at 9 p.m. on Monday, London time. And it's one hour, sorry, I uh, passed the hour now, but let us appreciate God. Let us remember our pastors. Let us remember our shepherds. Let us remember men and women of God who are over us. Let us appreciate. In fact, the Bible says someone who is being taught should appreciate the teacher. That is the book of Corinthians. That is, Paul said that. So you need to appreciate these people. They they are working for God, and they don't. If they, they don't have any other means to say to, to in fact, if you look at First Corinthians chapter sixteen, uh, start uh, uh, one sixteen says now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches in Galatia. Even so do ye. He has told the Galatians. So he started asking the Corinthians to do the same thing. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. When I come, whosoever ye shall approve by your letter, then will I send to bring your liberty to Jerusalem. And if we met that I go also, they go with me. So it is good to appreciate men and women of God. Appreciate them. Those who see, uh, look after you, your shepherd, your pastor, the apostles, the teachers, the reverends, the prophets of God. Don't pay for the service. You can appreciate them afterward. God we continue to be with you. God will guide you. Thank you very much for today. Once again, I appreciate you. God will continue to be with you. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, only my care. Father, the word has been spoken. I pray that this word will change your people. Your children will turn good leaf. 
and those of us who are men and women of God that are charging our members before we do prayer for them. Lord, come into our heart and change us, O Lord. And Father, those who even offer us money when we charge them, I pray that you go into their heart as well so that they will not offer us money before we pray for them. I pray, Almighty Father, that at the end, all of us will see you before we see them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you, you and your household. You will, pro you will prosper you. He will increase you. Everything you do will prosper. And the glory of God will continue to show you.